good swinger. Stella taught you. Good sister. We got lots of time to practice, don't we? Yeah. Woo. Boy. I jump up and down, alright? Alright, I'm about to jump out. Here we go. One, two, three. Woo! I can't. How do you get out? No, I know. I uh, show me how you get out. No, no, no. Yeah, I want to go take a break in the shade. Let's go. Come on. I gotta stop like this. I'll meet you at the tree. Well. Sage, hurry. There he comes. Good job. All right. That swing is pretty fun, isn't it? Whew. We've been doing that a while. So why don't you get a seat and get comfortable. All right. You know what I feel like right now? Story. A story sounds mighty fine. All right. Walter Jackson family, I hope y'all are doing mighty fine yourselves, enjoying uh, some good weather outside, uh, staying close to your family, still doing your schoolwork, and still reading. Uh, I sure do miss y'all. and. Uh, like with my own kids, we love reading around here, and uh, we like to do plenty of story breaks. So today I thought I'd share a story not only with Sage right here, but y'all out there too. So I hope y'all find a nice comfy seat. Now one of the things that we have at Walter Jackson in our outdoor classroom are two turtles. Do you know that, Sage? You know what kind of turtles they are? The box turtles. That means the front of their shell has a hinge that opens and closes. And right before we got out of school for this long, um, long time off, uh, they came out of their brumation, which is another word for turtle hibernation. And I know not many people got to see them. Uh, so when we get back to school, make sure you come to the outdoor classroom and see Ricky and Lucy. But today's story is about turtles. Now, a turtle shell is not very smooth, is it? It's not like an egg. What, what does a turtle shell look like, Sage? Um, a turtle shell looks like shape, like other kind of turtles, like um, it's a box. And kind of looks like a box. Is it smooth or is it rough? Rough. It's rough and, and it looks like coyotes crack. Coyotes can't get in. <laughs> no, coyotes can't get in there, can they? But speaking of coyotes, there's not a coyote in my story today, but there are some wolves, and they try to get into turtle shell. Well, let's jump into this story. It's why turtles have cracked shells. Way back when, before the hairs on my chin, Possum was out in the woods, and Possum was getting kind of hungry. And it was the season that persimmons grew on trees. A persimmon is an orange fruit. We don't have very many of them in the spring, but in the fall you'll see some persimmons. And Possum wanted to go on a persimmon picnic. Now the trouble is, the persimmon tree was across the river, and Possum could not get to the persimmon tree by himself. He needed his friend, Turtle. You see, Turtle and Possum, great friends. Possum would get on Turtle's back, and he'd get a hold of Turtle's nice, smooth shell, and Turtle would paddle across the river, and then they get to go to the persimmon tree together. So this day, Possum walked up to Turtle's house and knocked on the door, and Possum had to wait a while. Turtles are slow, and when Turtle finally opened the door for Possum, Turtle looked up and said, Why, hello there, Possum. Mighty fine to see you. What can I help you with today, Possum? And Possum looked down at Turtle and said, Hey, Turtle. You feel like a picnic today? Well, a picnic sounds mighty fine, Mr. Possum. Are we heading across the river today? You got it, Turtle. Uh, if you can help me across the river, I'll show you where the persimmon tree is, and it'll be delicious. And so Turtle, he locked up his house, and they walked on down to the river. Took them a few hours to get down to the river. It was a little piece, and Turtle was kind of slow. But when they got to the river, Possum hopped on Turtle's back. And remember, uh, Turtle's back was real smooth, so it was easy for Possum to get a grip on it and hang on tight, sit down, and they swam and rode across the river. And they walked a little more, and finally they got the biggest, most beautiful persimmon tree you could ever see. Orange persimmons everywhere. Now the next part that uh, Possum always used for 
turtle was he'd help turtle get up into the tree he'd put him on his shoulder and and turtle would go crawling on the branches and turtle would find the best persimmons and he'd he'd throw them down to possum possum would catch them and then they would eat them together possum was a great catcher if possum threw them down to turtle turtle wasn't fast enough to catch them so when they got to the persimmon tree possum got turtle up in the tree and then turtle he was walking along the branches and he was just dropping the persimmon slowly down to possum and when he'd catch one possum would make a pile of persimmons it was going to be a beautiful persimmon picnic and then after a few minutes of tossing persimmons down to possum <laughs> out from behind the tree came a big black wolf and the wolf started howling and it scared possum possum went behind a bush and that big black wolf looked up at turtle what are you doing in my persimmon tree i'm hungry hey why don't you stop throwing those persimmons down hey turtle throw some persimmons down to me i'm hungry and do you think Turtle threw any persimmons down to that wolf? No, uh, Turtle was angry. Turtle thought they scared Possum away. That was his friends. Turtle looked down at Wolf and said, Hey, Wolf, you, you scared my buddy Possum. I'm not going to throw any persimmons down to you. I'm going to keep throwing them to Possum. And that's what Turtle tried to do. He looked over where Possum was hiding and he threw a persimmon as far as he could, but instead of Possum catching it, the wolf caught it. Hop! And then the turtle looked at where Possum ran to. He ran to a different spot, and Turtle threw another persimmon, but the wolf ran and got it. Hop! And Turtle kept throwing the persimmons wherever Possum ran to hide. Hop! 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 And the wolf kept getting them before Possum could. So Turtle figured out. There was no way he was going to get any more persimmons down to possum. So Turtle started thinking. He might have been slow, but he was a fast thinker. He looked up at the persimmons that were left. And he saw a giant persimmon. You know how big that persimmon was? Big as a basketball. It was huge. And that gave Turtle an idea. So he hollered down to Wolf. Hey, Wolf, you got us beat. I'm not going to try to throw any more persimmons to possum. I'll throw them all to you. You're too smart and strong for us, Wolf. Ah, I like you now, Turtle. Thank you. I'm going to open my mouth, and you just throw them straight in. That's just what I was going to do, Mr. Wolf. And so the turtle took a few of the small persimmons, and he tossed them down to the wolf, and the wolf swallowed them. Oh, 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 oh. And then he tossed a few more little ones down to Wolf. Oh, 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 oh. And then as the wolf was swallowing those little ones, Turtle reached up and grabbed that big, huge persimmon, big as a basketball. And as he was throwing down little ones, he threw down the big ones. Oh, oh. Big basketball size persimmon got lodged in the wolf's throat and he choked and he, what do you think happened? He died. And so Turtle looked down at the wolf and the wolf wasn't moving and Possum came slowly out and Turtle came down and they, they kicked him a little bit to make sure he wasn't moving and sure enough, that wolf was as dead as a door now. Possum looked over at Turtle and said, well, I don't know about you, Turtle, but uh, I've had enough excitement for one day. I, I, I think I'm ready to go home. How about you? And Turtle said, well, you know what, Possum? I'm glad we made it out alive, and I am full of persimmons now, but now that I look at this wolf, he's just giving me an idea. Before you come and knock on my door, I was doing some spring cleaning, and... and I figured out I don't have enough spoons in my house. I need a few more spoons. And looking at this wolf's ears, that's kind of giving me an idea. 
And so the turtle, he found a sharp rock. And he took the wolf's ears and he started sawing off the wolf's ears and he yanked it off and he took that wolf's ear and he found a nice hot rock in the sun and he laid that ear on the rock and he let it dry out in the sun. And a few hours went by and the turtle picked up that wolf's ear and it was hard as leather. It was just a perfect little spoon where that wolf's ear dipped in. And so the turtle had him two brand new spoons. He was excited. And he looked over at Possum and said, Hey, Possum, you ready to go back home now? And Possum said, Well, you know what, Mr. Turtle? I got some relatives that live down in that holler over there. I think I'm gonna let you go in home and I'm gonna go say hi to my kin. I'll see you later, Turtle. Thanks for the ride over here. Okay, Possum. You take care and I'll see you later. So, Turtle, he got his two new what? He got his two new wolf ear spoons. He, he packed them up in his shell. He started crawling along. Now, this time, Turtle, he decided that uh, he'd take the long way home, maybe see some things he hadn't seen in a long time. And as he was walking back to his house, he, he came across a village. And in this village lived some real nice humans. And when they saw that turtle walking along, he looked down and he looked tired. So they asked the turtle, hey turtle, you sure do look tired. Why, why don't you come into our village? We got a big pot of hominy. That's kind of like white corn ground up, kind of like grits. We got some nice hot hominy. You, you can have some uh, for a meal as you continue on your journey home. And turtle said, oh, I'm mighty hungry. Uh, I'll, I'll take a bowl of hominy. Thank you very much. So they brought that turtle into their village, and they put a big bowl of hominy right down in front of him, and they asked him, hey, turtle, do you need a spoon? Oh, no. I got a spoon myself. And he reached into his shell, and he pulled out one of his wolf ear spoons. And he started eating that hominy. Mmm. That's mighty fine hominy, thank you. It's got some good butter in it too, thank you very much. And all the people of the village, they were watching that turtle eat. And they started whispering, hey, what's that turtle eating with? That looks like a, that looks like a wolf's ear. <gasps> what, what, what'd you say? That, that turtle is eating with a wolf's ear? Oh my goodness gracious, there, there's only one way you could get a, a wolf's ear off of his head. Do you think? Do you think that turtle killed a wolf? I, I bet he did. I bet he did. What, what if he doesn't like our hominy? What if he gets mad at us? What if he just tried to kill us? Ah! Everybody get out of here! Wolf kill a turtle on the loose! Get, 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 out of here! Get out of here! And all the people in that village, they ran away as fast as they could. They were scared of that turtle, and the turtle, he was just sitting there eating. And where'd all the people go? And the, the hominy's really good. They just ran off all of a sudden like, well, wherever you are, thank you for the, for the food. If I come back by, I'll, I'll see you again. And so he, he, he cleaned off his, his spoon. He put it back in his shell, and he continued on his journey. Little ways on down the path, he came across another village of people. And this village was just as kind as the first. And they saw that turtle walking by. He was walking a little slower than usual. He was already fed. Now, now do you think what he wanted? He needed Orange. something to drink. Yeah, he's thirsty. And so those kind people in that village, they asked, hey, turtle, well, we noticed you look thirsty. We just made a big batch of mint tea. Would you like some mint tea to refresh yourself? And then the turtle said, oh boy, that sounds mighty fine. I'd love some mint tea. So they brought him in, they put him at a table, they brought him uh, a cup of that tea, and they said, hey, Mr. Wolf, excuse me, hey, Mr. Turtle, would you like some honey for your mint tea? Oh, I sure would. If you, if you bring the honey out, I have my own spoon here. I can put the honey in the tea. And they brought the honey out, and he dipped his wolf ear spoon in the honey, and he mixed it into the tea, and he was drinking it, 
Mmm, yum, yum, yum. That does hit the spot. Thank you so much. And they were watching him drink his tea and putting the honey in there. That turtle, he loves sweet stuff, so he put a few more uh, spoonfuls of honey in there. The people were watching him. Hey, do, do you see what the turtle is dipping in the honey? What was he dipping? It, it looks like it's a spoon. Have you ever seen a spoon like that before? Have you? It kind of looks like a, it's got a dog's ear. What kind of ear is that? Yeah. That's like a wolf's ear. Oh my goodness. Do you, do you think that turtle killed a wolf? If, if, what if he doesn't like our tea? What if he gets mad at us? What if he kills us next? Ah, we gotta get out of here, run! And the people ran as fast as they could. They thought if that turtle didn't like their tea, he'd kill them just like he killed that wolf. They ran and they were scaring that turtle. He was just drinking. No. Where'd all these people go? All these humans are jumping. Everybody's running away all of a sudden. Do, do, do I smell? Is that it? Hmm, I don't know. Well, wherever you are, thank you for the tea. It was delicious. And that turtle, he put his glass down. He put his spoon back in his shell. And he got to walking again. This time, he didn't come across any more villages. The villages were all done. He was kind of getting close to the river again. He knew he was getting closer to home. But as he was walking through the woods, normally when you walk through the woods, you hear what? You hear birds, you hear animals, you, you hear uh, all kinds of different sounds like the birds we hear now, but it was quiet. You see, everybody had heard about the wolf killing turtle. When the birds saw him coming, they were quiet. When the deer saw him coming, they, they ran off farther and deeper into the woods. Every animal was scared about the wolf killing turtle. And so the wolf, excuse me, the turtle thought things were strange. Why is everything so quiet? Oh, well, I guess I keep on going. I don't have much farther to go home now until right out of the bushes came three big scary wolves. And it was the brothers of the first wolf that the turtle and the possum had killed. And the wolves circled around the turtle. Ah, there he is, there he is. There's that turtle that killed our brother. And the turtle said, killed your, killed your brother. I don't know anything about killing anybody's brother. It wasn't me, it wasn't me. Ah, you didn't kill our brother. Well, let's see what's in your shell. So they picked the turtle up and they started shaking the turtle up and down. And you know what fell out of his shell? What do you think fell out of the shell? The wolf's ears. Aha! There's my brother's ears. There's our brother's ears. It was him. It was him. It was him. And I told you this is our brother's ear right here. I told you you killed him. And now we're going to kill you. And the turtle, he was kind of shaking in his shell a little bit. Oh, no. What, what, what are you going to do to me? And the biggest wolf of the group, he said, I know what we're going to do. We're going to roast you over a fire. How do you like that, turtle? And the turtle, even though he may be slow, he was fast thinking. And the turtle said, oh, well, okay, then. You go ahead and put me in that fire. I'll pop in my shell, and I'll roll around, and I'll put all your fire out. That's what I'll do. Ah, oh, you will, will you? Well, instead of roasting you, we'll boil you. We'll put you in a pot of boiling water and we'll have turtle soup. And then the turtle, he got to thinking again. Okay, okay, you go ahead and you, you put me in that pot of boiling water. I'll pop in my shell and I'll swim around and I'll crack your pot with my shell and the water will put your fire out. Ah, man. This turtle's smart. What are we gonna do? What are we gonna do? What are we gonna do? And you know what? While they were thinking, the turtle was thinking too. The turtle figured out he was real close to the river. If there was some way he could get into that river, the wolves wouldn't follow him. They were scared of the water. And so the turtle, he looked over at those wolves and he said, Hey, wolves, whatever you do, please, please, please. Don't throw me in that river. I can't swim as fast as that river goes. It'll drown me. My big, heavy shell will make me sink to the bottom, and I'll drown whatever you do. Well, don't throw me in that river. Please, 
go do whatever you want. Aha! That's what it is. You're scared of the river. And that's just what we're going to do. All right, brothers, grab a foot and grab a leg. We're going to throw this turtle into the river. We're going to watch him drown. And so that's what the wolves did. One wolf grabbed one leg, one wolf grabbed another, and they got ready to toss that turtle into the river. One, two, three, and they let the turtle go. And that turtle went end over end over end until finally he came down with a, what sound do you think he made? Snap. What? Snap. A snap. He didn't land with a splash. He landed with a crack. You see, when they threw him in the water, he didn't land in the water. There was a rock that no one saw. There was a rock in the middle of the river, so the turtle ended with a crack, and he rolled down into the water. Oh, my back, oh, my back. And he did sink to the bottom of the river, and the turtle, he didn't really drown. He was strong enough, and he could hold his breath long enough, so when he went to the bottom of the river, he crawled along the bottom until he got out on the other side. And when he got out on the other side, he saw two things. First thing he saw was the wolves on the other side howling and angry. Arr, 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 arr. But they knew they couldn't get to him. And the second thing he saw was his shell. His beautiful, smooth shell. Do you think it was smooth anymore? It was cracked and splintered like an egg. There was pieces of it on the bank that the river had washed up, so he gathered the pieces of his formerly beautiful shell, and he got some mud, and he mixed it all together. He mixed it all together with pieces of his shell, and he stuck it on his back like a puzzle, and then he crawled off into the sun, and he just laid in the sun with his cracked, muddy shell. And he let the sun bake his shell, just like it baked those wolf's ears. Finally, that mud got hard, and it, and it brought the shell pieces in together. When he woke up, he looked back at his shell, and he didn't like what he saw, but at least it was all put together. And from that day till this, guess what turtles have? They have cracked, rough, broken shells. And another thing that happened from that day till this, wolves and turtles are no longer friends. And so now you know why turtles have what? Cracked shells. Boys and girls, that's called a why story. A poor quoi story. Can you say that word, poor quoi? Four quads a French word. It means why. Uh, way back when, before we had all these cool pieces of technology, people would make up stories and tell them to each other to explain things, why they are the way they are. That story I borrowed from a Native American tribe, the Cherokees. Some of those are my own additions. That's how storytellers work. Uh, but the bones of the story are still there. How that wolf, excuse me, how that turtle trick those wolves. So I hope you enjoyed uh, today's story. Every week we're going to post a new story. Uh, and also after the story is done, uh, I'm going to share some books that you might enjoy. I know that we're uh, stuck at home right now, but don't forget about the electronic books that you have access to through the Walter Jackson Library and the Public Library. So stay tuned for just a minute and I'll share some books about turtles and tricksters that kind of relate to today's story, and you may able, be able to find them electronically. Hi, everybody. I'm going to show you how to access some electronic books that Walter Jackson Elementary students have access to. The page you're looking at now is the Destiny page. Normally, students use this as our online catalog where students can search for physical books we have in our library. However, today, the button that we're concerned about is this eBooks button right here. Now, if you or your student does not know how to get to this Destiny page, another way to get to the eBooks is to Google Walter Jackson Elementary and go to our school's overall website. Up at the top, 
hover your pointer over parents and students and come down and click on library. This will take you to our library website where we use the same buttons that we use on Destiny. Whichever way you get here, please click on the ebooks button and then you'll see the 77 ebooks that our school has bought. If you would like to search for a book, if we have a book on a certain topic or a certain character, you can type it in in the search box, such as reptiles, and students will find that we have at least one book that talks about turtles, which went with our story today on why turtles have cracked shells. To read an ebook, all students have to do is click or touch if you're on a tablet and click play book. The student will be allowed to read it page by page at their own pace or read it all at once where the narrator of the book will read the book out loud. Uh, the student at the bottom here has different options, whether it be autoplay, uh, you can go to a table of contents, you can go to a glossary for words that might be confusing, lots of options with the ebook. Most of the ebooks are also accelerated reader books, so you can read a book and take an AR test on it. Now in the story today, besides turtles, uh, you heard some tricks. We have some amazing magical trick but excuse me books that students may want to try during this time off they can learn tricks with everyday stuff and they can learn some coin tricks that they can show me when they get back to school uh, so just like i showed you with the reptile book click on the green button make your pick whether you read it at your own pace or read it all at once and listen to the narrator we have besides the reptile book and the magical trick book as you see here we've got all different kinds of books uh, some easy readers some longer chapter books both nonfiction and fiction books a few sports books a few holiday books if you don't want to look through the whole collection you can search for certain books the collection is currently small but hopefully we will grow it over the next few years if you have any questions about how to access the ebooks from the Walter Jackson Elementary School Library website, please email todd.mcdonald at dcs.edu. Stay tuned in next week for some more stories and more ways to access some great reading material online.